Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Now, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus came out in 2000, and this is the 25th film in the Godzilla franchise, 24th if you don't count the 1998 American Godzilla. And this is the second film of what is known as the Millennium Godzilla series, the first being Godzilla 2000. Now, this is not in continuity with Godzilla 2000, Scene. Basically, the Millennium series was an anthology Godzilla series where each film was in its own universe. Now, the film was written by the same screenwriters as Godzilla 2000, both of whom have also written Godzilla movies prior to that. Now, in terms of continuity, it appears that this film is a direct sequel to the original Godzilla, or at least it is and it isn't, because the film opens up with scenes from the original 1954 film, but it also reshoots a lot of those scenes with the Godzilla from this movie. And also, there's no reference to the Oxygen Destroyer at all. The way I kind of interpret it is it seems like this film is set in sort of an alternate Godzilla universe where the events of the 1954 film more or less happened, except Godzilla was never destroyed with the Oxygen Destroyer and lived on and continued to frequently attack Japan over the decades. Now, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus is actually not very well liked by fans of the franchise, and to a certain extent I understand why, because the movie does have a lot of problems, but I still enjoy this movie despite its problems. Personally, I enjoy it more than Godzilla 2000, however the film does have a lot of the same problems as Godzilla 2000. Now, what the plot of Godzilla vs. Megaguirus is it follows a young woman in the Japanese military, who a few years prior to the events of this movie was part of a group of soldiers trying to fight Godzilla when he was attacking Osaka and her commanding officer was killed by Godzilla actually trying to save her. So ever since then, she has vowed revenge against the creature. So she becomes part of a government-run project to try to create a man-made black hole. Basically, the goal is to try to trap Godzilla in another dimension for all eternity. But in their experiment, they end up opening up a wormhole and a giant dragonfly from another dimension comes through into our world and lays an egg. A little boy finds the egg and when him and his mother move to Tokyo, he takes the egg with him but then secretly disposes of the egg in the sewers. And then Tokyo ultimately becomes overrun with these giant dragonflies that are multiplying at a rapid rate, and then they attack Godzilla and drink some of Godzilla's blood, and then they inject it into their queen, Megaguirus, and the radiation from Godzilla's blood mutates it, and ultimately a battle ensues between Godzilla and the queen dragonfly, Megaguirus. Now, Misio Tanaka does a pretty good job in this movie as the character of Kiriko, but the character herself is kind of two-dimensional. Like, she's basically sort of a female Captain Ahab in a way, which I think is definitely what they were going for. I mean, she's likable enough, but there could have been more to her character other than her quest for revenge. But the actress does a good job with what she's given, and I like that she's playing a role that would normally be written for a male character. Like, in the movie, she becomes the captain of the team of people trying to take down Godzilla, and I like how none of her men seems to have a problem with her being a woman. Like, they respect her just as much as they would a male commanding officer. The only time they address the fact that she's a woman is in the scene where she's confronting the little boy who found the dragonfly egg. Now, what for me, the best character in this movie was definitely Kudo, played by Shozuke Tanihara. And he's likable and funny in the movie, but I will say there are scenes in the movie where it's clear he has a thing for Kiriko, and it does kind of border on creepy in some parts, especially when it's revealed he made a little digital version of her on his computer, but they do kind of address how creepy that actually is. Yuriko Hoshi plays the scientist who's spearheading this black hole project. Now, Yuriko Hoshi also played the photographer in the original Mothra vs. Godzilla, and she played 
played the journalist in Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Masato Ibu plays the main human villain of the film, but his character is kind of forgettable, and that's actually kind of a complaint I would have about this movie, is aside from the two main protagonists, most of the human characters in this movie are very forgettable. Now, Megagiris is an interesting monster, even though her design is a little too similar to Batra, but I did really like the Mega Nulon, which are the smaller dragonfly creatures, and they're actually based on the giant bug creatures from the original Rodan movie. And there's a surprisingly brutal scene involving one of these creatures where it attacks and kills a teenage couple, and it honestly feels like a scene out of a completely different movie, and I honestly wish the film had more scenes like that. And probably my biggest issue with this movie is it's very tonally inconsistent, like, it doesn't know whether it wants to be the dark Godzilla or the more campy Godzilla, because the fight scene between Godzilla and Megagiris is actually really campy and harkens back to the later Shoha era. Like, there's a scene in this movie where Godzilla legitimately body slams Megagiris, and it's almost as stupid as the infamous dropkick from Godzilla vs. Megalon. Now, another issue I have with this movie is sort of wasted potential, because the basic premise of this movie, the whole idea of a machine that could create black holes, that's a brilliant premise. Because if you think about it, if something went wrong with this machine, that would seriously put the human race in an existential crisis far worse than anything Godzilla represents. And also, there was a lot of potential with this premise to go back to the themes of the original Godzilla, where what if different governments or even different groups are trying to get their hands on the Dimension Tide to try to weaponize it? But the movie really does nothing with that. It only uses the Dimension Tide as sort of a plot device to explain where Megagiris came from. Or even the fact that this movie is about opening up gateways to other dimensions, and the fact that the movie is already set in sort of an alternate timeline. Like, they could have established maybe a Godzilla multiverse with this, and that would have been a great way to explain all the different Godzilla continuities and tie them all together. Like, maybe you could suggest that the Shoha era was taking place in one universe, while the Heisei series was taking place in another universe. But the movie does nothing like that. Maybe that's just me being a huge fan of Stephen King's Dark Tower novels. And in speaking of Stephen King, I swear the people behind this movie must have read Stephen King's The Mist, because the whole premise of the military opening up a gateway to another dimension and giant bugs coming through, that's basically the premise of The Mist. And that's really my biggest issue with this movie, is it has a brilliant premise, but doesn't really do anything with the the premise. It's a very standard run-of-the-mill Godzilla movie, but it's not bad, and I do enjoy this one. But that was my review on Godzilla vs. Megagiris, and bye.